Everything you never wanted to know about Furry Creek. But first, I have to get past the gate. Up in Furry Creek today. And it's much nicer here than it was in Vancouver. It's about 270 people that live in Furry Creek. And the big draw seems to be the golf course and the views. For adventure bikes, the big draw is Furry Creek FSR. Before you can do that, you got to get past the gate. A staff person once let me past the gate, and I asked them why it was there, and they said they had too many shooters in the area. Okay, well, that wasn't very graceful, but it did the job. Paddling all the way. There's a gate back there. Furry Creek was named in the 1870s after an early settler and logger named Oliver Furry. And they logged both sides of the slopes here. And there was a shaft from the Britannia mine that opened into the valley. And the loggers provided lumber up to the mine to shore them up. So this is the side road about one kilometer up that goes down to a run of river hydro plant, but it's private property. I've never seen the plant. Maybe we can get a look at it with the drone. Apparently the plant draws from Furry Creek three kilometers up, which I've also never seen. I'm going to try and have a look at that today. Well, that was not very dramatic, but I did catch a view of the pen stalks running up this way. So I'm going to go back to the junction back here. This is the junction. I've been up here before. There's a, uh, there's a road here that goes over towards Britannia Mines, but it's blocked. I've been on this hill before and it is very steep unless they're talking about this one no so I have gone up this road before on the KTM 690 and it was extremely steep and it has a gate before it joins up with the road that I want. But there's one other possibility which is I don't think I can get to because I've run it before. It's called the uh, Furry Downing Road. Okay, I think I just saw Penstock Road. Up 
that way, not that way. No. She is very steep. Digging a little trench here. My front wheel. And the map shows a gap in the road at the top of the hill. is actually Furry Creek, but they've already diverted the stuff they're using for the power out of it quite a ways up. I think it looks like it's had a fair amount of work. We should fill here. this little road on another day and it goes in I would say about maybe a kilometer before it peters out into nothing. This is the it's called Forest Dunning which obviously doesn't get a lot of traffic. I've run this one before as well but ended up in a washout at a, at a waterfall. Give it a try and see what happens. It's quite damp in here. It's just a little creek.
Hmm. Yeah. This is what I ran into last time. With the 690, I even contemplated trying to get over it very briefly. Because it is very big rocks and logs. I suspect the dirt bikes can do it. Definitely looks like the dirt bike guys have been building little bridges and trying to smooth it out. But that's beyond me. So I believe that is the last option to get to Penn Lake where the power plant draws off the creek. Try and get turned around here and head up towards the two lakes. Back at the little bridge. This is the main line again. This main line, as I call it, doesn't even run up the same valley as Furry Creek. It's a valley uh, to the southeast of Furry Creek. So even though there's lots of branches and stuff off of, off of this one, I don't believe there's any way that it can... We're, we're heading off in a 90 degree angle from the Furry Creek Valley. So there's no way this one can join back up again. Well, right even with the end of Marion Lake here, but you can't see it at all because of all the foliage. There doesn't seem to be any, oh, some trails down to it. look unusually straight. So perhaps Wikipedia does not lie. This is the south end of Miri, Mirian Lake. And there's only the tiniest little piece of land between it and Phyllis Lake. than I recall. And this is Phyllis Lake. Very pretty. Float is gone. There used to be a float here. Too bad. That was a nice place to hang out on a hot summer day. I'm gonna go down to the end of Phyllis Lake here and see what's at the end of the road.
this is where the main road goes, supposedly. It's up there. But you can see, you probably can't see them on camera, but there's a gate right up there. Which is the Capilano watershed. And you can't go past that. Maybe we'll go down this way. Might end up being a mistake, but... Just a maintenance trail for the transmission towers. But I see little motorcycle tracks. Yeah, you can see the gate up there just by the transmission tower. And that's it, you can't go no further way out. You can see that this is all Capilano watershed all the way down to North Vancouver. Capilano and Seymour watershed. Okay, heading back now. Phyllis Lake. The Capilano watershed up at the end of the, on the other side of that gate there is 19,500 hectares or 48,000 acres. The Greater Vancouver Water District got it in 1927 from the 99 Mountains from the province and they eventually closed it to uh, got rid of all the logging and completely closed it down to the uh, to the public. And there was a proposal started in 1929 and stayed alive until uh, the mid 50s to put a highway through here and it would have followed these transmission lines right right down this furry creek at the side. Furry creek. Mm -hmm. well, once again I forgot to turn the camera on for my descent down the work around here. Bad. Too badly. 